What I need is some sort of intro catchphrase thing so I don't start every video with all right, but I don't have one. So, all right, I'm going to play chapter two of Leon. It's strange that the game doesn't say Resident Evil 6 when you start it. Which is such an iconic, iconic feature of the series, it's a really odd thing to leave out. It actually is in the intro video, the little video that loops at the main menu, but don't otherwise hear it. Very odd. Maybe they thought because you have to go through it every time. Normally you only see it on new game. I don't know. Uh, so normally between campaign uh, campaign levels it would take you to the skill screen because I'm jumping out of each level at the end of each video. I'm not seeing that so I'm going to go in now. So you start the game without any skills equipped at all and um, then you gradually buy and upgrade them. Unfortunately I've already bought a load of them so it's very difficult for me to demonstrate not having any skills. But I'm going to use a specific set that ought to sort of minimize the disruptive effect on the game. So I'm going to use one called Field Medic that means that my partner will heal me. And I'm going to use Item Drop Increase which is really cheap to buy and therefore easy to get. And there was another one I was planning to use... Oh yes, I thought I might get some more shotgun shells because then I can fire the shotgun more frequently rather than having to be sparing with it because the shotgun is awesome. So I'm going to equip that set of skills. You can switch, you can define up to eight different sets of skills and then switch between them during game. You can't redefine them, so it's a strangely clunky system where you really have to think in advance about what skills you might need. So you can see there's a zombie hunting skill which is useful if there are zombies and not useful if there aren't zombies. Some of the later levels don't have zombies in them at all. So you need to predict in advance which skills you're going to use. And it, you're not really building a spec, you're not really doing anything. Just between levels you just end up buying I can do more damage with, sh with shooting, I can do more damage with melee. It's a sort of straightforward way to play the game. So I continue will probably take me to the place I want to go. Yes it will, there we go. So Leon chapter 2. So, again, I'm setting the difficulty to Veteran. Oh, I'm... That's strange. I'm allowed to lower the vet difficulty but not raise it for some reason. Uh, this is asking me to choose because the game actually supports split-screen mode, which is which is nice in... Most games don't support split-screen anymore. Um, I'm setting it to offline. If you, you, you can play single-player online, which allows another player to join, and you can disable allowing another player to join, but if you're online, you can't pause the game. So when you switch it to offline, most of these options become irrelevant. The tag reaction is the thing I mentioned in the previous video that blocks bullets. Your partner blocks the path of your bullets, which seems like a strange thing to need to have on the mission start screen every single time you start a mission. Infinite ammo doesn't turn on infinite ammo. It allows infinite ammo cheats to be used if you've unlocked them, presumably to prevent your partner from using them, although that wouldn't really do you any harm. I guess you might be playing with someone online who just spams magnum bullets constantly. So in chapter one we got on a bus that's going to drive us to the cathedral that we need to go to. We also ran through some zombie infested streets and defended a gun shop. We also received word that an organization named Neo Umbrella just claimed responsibility for the attack. Neo Umbrella. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. It's Raccoon City all over again. That's all the news I've got. Now it's your turn to help me. I need to know what's in that cathedral. I've got suits breathing down my neck for info. Suits? Specifically? Derek C. Simmons, National Security Advisor. Hang on. <sighs> You would think they would have learned after last time. No! Help me! Oh my god, no! Son of a... Get off me! Oh shit! We're going over! 
awesome slow-mo. Too awesome to not have slow-mo. I'm not sure what that truck is for, because the bus was falling off the cliff anyway. I guess it just wasn't exciting enough. Concerned, of course, with their recent brush with death. <laughs> it's heroic of them to be worried for everyone else. Leon, Helena, are you okay? Yeah. For whatever reason, we're still alive. We're cutting through the cemetery to reach the cathedral. A cemetery. So Resident Evil has a has a strange relationship with cemeteries because, of course. In Resident Evil, the zombies are human victims of a virus. The virus turns you into a zombie. It kills you and turns you into a zombie, but... Corpse in a graveyard is... is already long dead, and you wouldn't have thought the virus could reanimate it, but apparently it can. I think that started in Resident Evil 3. I, I, to be honest, I think they're not really thinking about it. I think they go... Graveyard, zombies, go. Probably melee for a bit. That was another accidental counter attack. Uh, maybe switch to the knife. So uh, Leon starts with the knife. Elena doesn't have a knife. Elena starts with a sawn off shotgun instead. I don't think she ever uses it when she's being controlled by the AI, but she has a, she has a sawn off shotgun instead of a knife, which it's pretty irritating because it takes a different kind of ammunition to the regular shotgun. So your inventory just ends up full of ammo. The knife's pretty effective at pet hates in loot based games is having to stand around waiting for the corpse to see if any loot drops rather than just being able to grab it and run. Surprising how many games do that wrong. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this being a slow paced game, but... In most cases you'd rather be paying attention to what's going on, and the loot, the loot is sort of intrinsically unimmersive anyway. And so forcing you to wait around looking for the corpses isn't really adding anything to my experience. But you have to wait till the corpse is about half dissolved before the loot will appear. Oh, a dog. This tomb had a herb in it. The knife can make quick shots, just like a gun can. Which means it's actually surprisingly effective against dogs, even though it really ought not to be. Yeah, you can see how long it took the loot to appear. So this is the way onwards. There's a little house I skipped over there because I happen to know that this door is locked. Damn it! It's locked. Otherwise, obviously, I would have gone straight to the little house. Come on, then. We'll figure something out. Maybe there's a key.
One really, one really nice effect of the patronizingly straightforward this is where you need to go symbols is that they stop you from wandering the location looking looking for things that you're supposed to find and instead finding places you're not supposed to go or, or glitchy glitchy blocks that look like they shouldn't block you it, it, it focuses you on going where you're supposed to go Except, obviously, in the case where you go into the room to find some loot. So maybe focuses is maybe the wrong word. So because I equipped that skill called Field Medic, she now gives me pills when she gets me up rather than stabbing me in the chest. Which actually adds up to a huge number of extra health points. Very powerful skill, but probably necessary for the harder difficulties. Whereas you can see, I have no shortage of ammo, but a severe shortage of health pills. The uh, the, the harder difficulties, it doesn't seem to be any more difficult to kill things. It's just harder to you, you take more damage if you let them get to you. So actually, ammunition isn't the concern, but health items really are. I guess there are worse things than chasing a dog through a cemetery. Yeah, it could be chasing us. I have no idea why that dog has that key. I suspect the designers don't know why that dog has that key either. It is quite a nice graveyard. I don't know anything about graveyards in America. I don't know what they they tend to be like. Graveyards in the UK tend to be old, particularly graveyards outside churches uh, in urban areas predate predate the modern era substantially. I think I should probably use my gun. So you can shoot where you're down, and unlike, say, Borderlands, where you can get yourself up by killing yourself, by killing things, or Gears of War, I think, where you, you essentially can't die because they will always go after your partner. You're in real danger when you're on the ground. If anything gets to you, they seem to prioritise you as a target, and if anything gets to you, you die. So you absolutely cannot stay down. For any length of time at all. Your partner's pretty good at getting you up. There are there are moments in the game where you've been separated from each other and at that point you need to be incredibly careful. And if you end up lying on the ground with the wrong weapon equipped, like say you were using a sniper rifle, then you're in real trouble because you can't switch weapons while you're lying on the ground. I think the zombies are spawning infinitely in this section. <laughs> It's quick shots are not not killing this dog. And I'm down again. Elena is fallen into an open grave.
friend of mine asked me if uh, if Leon is a character, by which he meant is he is he a sort of rounded personality or is he just a gun and a haircut? He's, he's very much just a gun and a haircut. It's it's true of all the the Resident Evil characters really that, that it has extraordinarily thin characterization even for a computer game in terms of the. Uh, the time, the time that's devoted to treating them as if they are awesome, cinematic, well-developed characters, but but absolutely nothing has happened. I mean, I think Leon has one personality characteristic, which is that he kind of thinks a lot of Ada, even though Ada herself has no personality either. He thinks she's great because she's pretty and mysterious, and and. She thinks he's great because of she met him or something. I don't really understand why. It's one of those sort of Phantom Menace quality romances. Now let's get to that cathedral. So in that case, that would actually have been an extremely confusing scenario without the little objective markers. And of course, the objective markers allow them to be quite lazy in terms of. I have no idea where the dog is. I mean, I assume it ran off down the path, but I had no way to locate it, and it's dark and rainy, and there's no way I'd be able to tell which dog had a key in its mouth or whether or not it had left the cemetery entirely. And the objective markers make that scenario painless in a way that you'd otherwise have to have quite contrived, quite c contrived mechanics to ensure that the players knew what was going on. Well, nothing broken anyway. Good thing too. Kind of deck is doubling back for me. You need the cable. So Helena has run off rather than coming down to join me. I'm not sure why. It's a sort of poorly justified co-op section. So this is not a good place to be with no healing items. Now that I'm by myself. Oh, my shotgun has no bullets in it. That is not ideal. Ah, uh, this could be a problem. Luckily, when you die and restart, it, it starts you on uh, full health, which is often an interesting balance problem. But in this case, it's not too bad. Because you're... You're rewarded for not dying by your score at the end of the level. So, uh, someone who's not trying to get a good score can, sort quote, exploit their way through the level. Oh. He has run off. stun and damage you and are therefore were well worth killing. It's gonna cost me all of my all of my shotgun shells to do it. No, he's he's miles away now. So when off by yourself really cannot afford to get hit by a zombie on this difficulty.
believe there's a red herb around here somewhere. Another locked door. Zombie that's facing away from you and unaware of you is instantly killed. A little bit strange, I guess. Zombies aren't conventionally something you would stealth kill. Oh. So these. These large chess pieces on the floor show that Helena's been doing a good job of murdering all the baddies around this corner. The uh, shriekers drop the large ones. The uh, the skill point drops all look like chess pieces, which is which is a an intriguing example of this game's inherent visual aesthetic. Because there's no overall chess theme to the story or the setting or anything about it. They just they just look that way because someone thought they would look cool that way. Having now joined up with Helena, I'm in a lot less danger. Passing that quick time event kills the zombie, failing that quick time event throws it off without killing it, so it's quite generous. Got a bit turned around now. It's a good place to look for loot. Now this must be where Helena started. That zombie's wearing an ancient chainmail breastplate. Which of course, with the logic of computer games, means it's invulnerable to bullets. Because chainmail can stop bullets. If that were true, the Middle Ages would have gone quite differently. I don't know where this red herb is. And I don't have enough inventory space for it. I'll talk a little bit more about the inventory system when it starts to become really painful. Uh, the screaming actually causes zombies to spawn from the little doors, which is which is cool. It doesn't quite make sense, but it's it's fun. It's a fun conceit that all the tombs are full of ancient corpses, and then the screamer draws them out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Man, you're a sight for sore eyes. Thanks. You coming to this cathedral with me, or what? Incendiary grenades stack in fives, so whenever you have six, that's a good time to throw an incendiary grenade. go anywhere without checking for everything nearby first. Roger. When you equip a grenade and then throw it, it switches Hello? you back to the last I weapon you were using. There. Open up. Are you crazy? Those things will kill us! Look, it's just us. Hurry up and let us in. Church bells? Are you kidding me? Get ready. Here comes company. Hopefully we can lure some of them together and uh threatening of course because they interrupt you when you're trying to do something difficult. Oh, not good. Probably should have used a first aid spray or something there. The game has gratuitous and excessively long death animations. Which go on just a little bit too long to be funny or entertaining or satisfyingly gory. I see it! Hurry! Naturally it saved before I picked everything up rather than after, even though there was a logical place for it to save when I used the door. A little strange. Save points are Hello? worth talking about another no, time in this game. In it Open doesn't up. do them very well. Are you crazy? Those things will kill us. Look, it's just us. Hurry up and let us in.
Here comes company. They don't, they don't seem to want to come in. They're thinking about it. Tried to counter him. That Shrieker is going to make countering very difficult. Combat roll sideways in much the same way as you combat roll backwards. Quite useful if you remember to do it. Really ought to chase the shrieker and kill it when it inflates. There he goes. So, I mean, this this fight sort of demonstrating that there's actually quite a lot of tactical variety going on in this game. It's not just a case of shooting zombies. There are different priority targets that you're dealing with. Things to pay attention to. Oh, that's not good. I think she may have killed the zombie that was in the middle of doing a long death animation, so it actually ended up very short. Let's try that again. See it. Hurry. This is why I didn't try to play on professional. Someone's in there. Open up! Are you crazy? Those things will kill us! Look, it's just us. Hurry up and let us in. Go get rid of us first! Get ready. Here comes company. It's a little disturbing that zombies can leap. I 
I guess we have 28 days later to think of this. This would be a much easier scenario. Is there a Shrieker? I don't see a Shrieker. Let's see if I can lure some of them together into a little group. No, oh, it doesn't seem to be working. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's the Shrieker. One shotgun shell will pop him, but a lot of pistol shots won't. Pretty sure that shriek is still alive. Yes. want me to go in, but there's stuff lying all over the yard. Oh dear. Come on, get inside, hurry! Yeah, they're still coming, let's go. scene very similar to the previous scene where we went through a door but this time we didn't have to shoot the door. It's, it's nothing if not inconsistent in this game. Are you... Sorry guys. We're not rescue workers. There's a secret door by the altar that leads underground. But we need to find a way to open it. You want to tell me what's down there? It's better if I show you. And no one in here seems interested in who we are. Are you okay? My son, Marco. He's in the PSAA. You watch. He'll be here with the whole army any minute now. Are you okay? So somehow this church is safe, despite the fact that everywhere else is overrun. I guess because it's a fortress church or something. There are stairs under this statue. 
It was open the last time I was here. Shit, what do we do? Yeah, we'll figure something out. That's... Let's take a look around. That's not really a Christian icon there. This isn't just part of the decor. You're right. And there's more here than meets the eye. You got it. <laughs> now, these situations are intriguingly different in co-op and single player. Because in single player there's no real puzzle. She just does what needs doing. In co-op obviously you work together to try to figure out what it is that you need to do. Although I suppose not if you're playing with a stranger on the internet, then you just throw them up there and then they run around up there for ten minutes trying to figure out what they're supposed to do while you stand there in frustration. So that doesn't sound super awesome. You have to be facing exactly correctly, otherwise it won't trigger, which this Nothing. is not a good control system for. You must be missing something. The two motherly saints will reveal the path. So this is not exactly a an impressive piece of puzzle, but it doesn't compare badly with the Resident Evil 1 era puzzle of find a gem and then put the gem in the slot. Some people do seem to have a slightly uh, to the other one. Something tells me they're not just for show. Slightly nostalgic view of what puzzles in Resident Evil were like. That's raining outside now. It's rather nice. Now I have to watch her run all the way back round, and rather than just run around, she decided to jump down and then climb all the way back up again. What the hell are we doing here? <laughs> this section is section is full of doors that open for no logical reason. Let's go. I don't know why that door would open. It's it's just one of those sort of game dungeony things. Because you have done half of what you need to do, a door opens allowing you to do the rest of what you need to do. cool statues. Strange disarmament method, but I guess that's dungeons for you. Uh, this is gonna get a little bit dicey. I don't have time for this crap. The ancient statue crossbow traps have laser sights. That's exactly. Oh, I want to miss out on all the fun. Didn't time my dodge very well there. Actually makes quite a nice change from killing zombies though. Okay, let's go. 
Let's go. Oh, the, uh, the laser sights default to red, by the way, and I have mine switched to blue, which I assumed would just change my laser sight, but it has instead changed all the laser sights in the game, which is a very strange option. This is a fairly subtle hint as to what to do next. And I'm surprised at the amount of energy that a laser sight puts out in this game. Helena? She's fine, she's going for ammo. Curious. There's a mirror on the ceiling, so therefore, I mean, what we've got here is an intriguing puzzle where you just need to you need to use the mirror to aim. But of course, because of the way the mirror works, all you need to do is aim directly at it. So if you don't actually understand that what you're looking at is a mirror, the puzzle's e even easier. <laughs> Very strange. And of course, picking up the statue makes the door open. It's it, it feels like there's a sort of it, it's almost become an end in and of itself that you don't think about what the purpose of the structure might be or the person building it. What could they possibly have been thinking? Who would design a door that only opens when you lift a... Lift a statue off a plinth. So, I've now got a third weapon. Fourth weapon, not counting the knife. Third weapon, not counting the knife. So now the inventory space starts to really matter. Toll the five bells loud and clear, and thus the true path shall appear. Nothing like a good centuries-old riddle. I have to figure it out. It's remarkably technologically sophisticated for something that's centuries old. So, bell towers. Can't see the fourth tower from here. Fourth tower has no bell in it. Then up there, there's a bell on that weather vane. And it's just giving me a sniper rifle. There's another weather vane there. That's all of them. And to feel bad shooting antiques. It's. It's not a very sensible locking system. And in any case, those bars were so widely spaced that we could have just reached between them anyway. It... This kind of thing does annoy me. It's why they, they've put. They go, oh, we've had an idea for a puzzle, but they haven't put the slightest thought into trying to have it make any sense. Did you hear that? It's become a tradition now. I mean, you kind of expect it from this kind of game. Door. Come on. So now we have two more statues. We're up on the second floor. Third floor for Americans. I think the American system does make a lot more sense, although ours, ours is of course indexed from zero, which programmers like. Personally, I'm not keen on indexing from zero, so I think the American system of flooring actually makes more sense. You got it.
rescued me. So we decided to jump down and fight it. Where the hell did that thing come from? Get up or down! This is uh, indicative of boss fights in this game. You can't really tell that you're damaging the enemies. Oh, this is not a good situation. I'm armed with a sniper rifle. Got some remote bombs to use up. Luckily, Helena's completely impervious to them. Gone up there to turn all the people into zombies. Take care of this. Hopefully, those zombies will drop some more ammo for my sniper rifle. She's right above me, isn't she? Good job. I am now completely out of stamina. Which means that if I try to do a melee attack, I do a sort of weak kick. I need to wait for my stamina to replenish before I can make any melee attacks. The uh, item drops do eventually just disappear over time, which is... Pretty much my most despised mechanic of all time. So you do have to run around and get them in mid-combat. Where's she gone? Oh, that's not ideal. Oh, that wasn't actually me dying. <laughs> Luckily, she's just happy to stand there while Helena rescues me. Oh, 
Well, she seems to have killed everyone in the cathedral and is now going for us. Good thing we're immune to the zombie gas. For no particular reason. I don't think there is any explanation for that. Just don't get killed by it. So again, tactically, that's a, that's a really interesting fight situation. That's that's a substantially more interesting fight than any fight I can remember from the early Resident Evils, which were just equip grenade launcher, fire grenade launcher into boss five times, boss dies. Or alternatively, don't have any grenade launcher ammunition available, fire pistol into boss 700 times, run away, Ready? boss dies. Yeah. Treasure chest has a chest piece in it. It's interesting that they chose to represent skill points with a literal object in the world, because it, 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 it results in you taking the world less seriously. They could easily have abstractly awarded skill points for opening a treasure chest that otherwise contained ammunition. Not that ammunition in a treasure chest is necessarily a very sensible thing either. I wish I believed God were looking out for us right now, but I think we're on our own. It's a strange line. I guess he's presumably referring to the cathedral. <laughs> So oh, this is supposed to be a puzzle. Oh, that's not how you use the thing. I think this panel and the numbers on the doors are connected. Most laborious door opening system. So these seem to be cells that have zombies in them, although that the first zombie that came out was wearing a lab coat, which implies that he was a researcher who'd then been shut in a cell. Of course, we're supposed to be opening that cell to go onwards, but we want to open all the other cells first to see if there's anything inside them. So that was zero, one, two. So... Uh, zero, two, one was already open. I'm onto them now. Elena hasn't figured out how they work yet. Well worth killing because it drops a thousand skill points. I'm just going through in order. There isn't a one, two, zero. Got it. Because I don't want to have to run all the way back up here. Those uh, boxes of bright blue folders seem slightly out of place with the general dinginess of the rest of the facility. This place looks like it's... Well, the, the lovely detail that I, that I couldn't show there was that... The signs on the door and the signs marking the door are both damaged in exactly the same way, which seems somewhat implausible. It's reasonable that the sign might have decayed for some reason due to whatever it is happened to the rest of the wall. But, um, oh, we can look through these. Zombies in there. Shrieker in there. Helmets. Great, another puzzle to solve.
Zombie with glowing red eyes in there. Trippable corpse. Nice security system. You just have to punch in the numbers on the doors. It's open. Let's go. Elena's leaving because she doesn't want what was in the other rooms. Ah, she has figured out how they work. Good work. And in his room was a green hat. There's a dead one of those things. All the monsters in this game have, I think, Serbian names? This has been the pattern in uh, Resident Evil 4 gave everything Spanish names and 5 gave everything African names and this has got everything Serbian names. Of course, means that they're completely unmemorable. Hurling a zombie over your shoulder, great for knocking other zombies over. So, one of those codes unlocked a door inside this other door. Leading to this room of secret treasure. And again, I have to approach it from exactly the front. I don't understand that. Got a first aid spray. Attacks do seem ineffective against these things. Fine, it's all fine. Came from one of the other rooms. Oh. You got it. Elena, of course, still hasn't explained why we're coming here. Remember this place. Deborah must be close. Who? Please be okay. Run off. Please, no. Thank God. It's not her. But where is she? Come on, where are you? In, uh... In co-op, the of course, the other player doesn't run off like this and just talks a bit as you enter the rooms. 
That's quite that's quite nice. That's very characterful as a, in the, for the single player game, and that means there's a slight distinction. He's not here either. Who are we looking for? Unconcerned by all the zombies lying around on the ground. Deborah, if you're here, give me a sign. And she's not checking any of these rooms for loot. Toilet full of file boxes full of loot. For some reason. So, those things, as I mentioned, unlock bits of plot for some reason. I'm not sure why you don't find the plot on documents. I think that would be a kind of a time honored tradition and a more reasonable more reasonable way to uncover it than shooting blue emblems that you find in places. And uh, the game itself seems strangely unconcerned with actually telling you anything that's going on. Primarily just seems quite scared. I get the impression he doesn't really want to be a zombie with a huge bullfrog throat. Normally big on sympathy. Damn it. I'm getting kind of tired of you stringing me along. Are you going to fill me in here or what? I think in the time that we've had, we she could have explained. Oh, so I'm, I've run out of stamina again because of how much I was melee attacking there, and you regenerate stamina a lot faster while lying on the ground, so... Just gonna have a little bit of a lie down. There we go. Be unconcerned by my melees. Leon was looking at something. After, I mean, this is a mechanic that's often used to draw attention to things in in the world. But he seems to be looking at Helena, which isn't isn't very useful because I know where Helena is. Sort of evil laboratory. Roger. What the hell is all this? None of these were here three days ago.
Data. what you wanted to show me? No. I thought... So Ada is the... See, Ada. So that woman or whatever. You know her? Kind of. Yeah. Uh, Ada is his aforementioned only personality characteristic because she's a woman that he met once and therefore fell in love with and she's a mysterious super spy who came back later to torment him in Resident Evil 4 and she can only speak in tired cliches and that, given the age of the facility and the apparently manky VHS video that would appear to be her origin story or something and she burst out of a thing that looked a bit like this and the guy who for some reason wears a ring on his thumb like he's in Battlestar Galactica was also there. These aren't interactable. We've got to do this again. No, oh, I got the code wrong. Leon hates having to type numbers into machines. I don't, I really don't understand the, uh, I mean if this is a science facility which is still running, presumably had something to do with the outbreak, then why are the walls all manky like this? They don't, they don't clean them. It's built into old sewers or something? But you'd still, you'd think they'd clean them or panel them or something. It's, it seems unhygienic. It's not a good place to do science experimentation. Even crazy evil science experimentation needs hygiene. zombie dog in a cage. Presumably there to indicate that the zombie dogs have something to do with the origin of this facility. These things look like frozen people in action poses. This guy looks like he's reaching for someone. Quite a bit of uh, weeping angels about them, really. There's a map, so I just came down here and in here. I get it. We have to activate them one by one. Why does everything have to be complicated?
Oh, she's shooting at the dog. Well done. Well done, Helena. Kill the dog. Come on, Helena. You gotta activate this thing. The, uh, the game uses the, the now fairly standard regenerating health pips, so you regenerate back up to a full pip after a little while if you don't lose an entire pip, and taking a herb pill in combat will refill the one that's currently half empty and then also give you another full one. So in a way you can get two points out of one pill if you use them carefully. This is this this is good mechanically because it encourages you to think a little bit more carefully about when and where you're using them. And every it's a very much a characteristic of of the mechanics of this game that they they work in the way that you'd expect. Uh, people seem to find the health pills extraordinarily unintuitive, but once they've got the hang of how the health pills work, I mean, you take a health pill, that heals you. Um, but there are also little subtleties to the mechanic that reward you for knowing exactly how they work and using them in the most efficient way possible. I have been separated from Helena. It matters whether you approach a zombie from the front or the back. They, they die in one hit if you hit stamp on their heads and can take a lot of kicks if you start stamping on their feet. So I'm going to have to get out by going down here. Yes, I remember now, there's a mechanic that zombies... It can take several headshots to stun them, but if you shoot them in the arm they turn round. I remember now. Pretty consistently. Let's, let's test this. Yep. And then we get to do a fun wrestling move, which is entirely too intimate for my taste when dealing with an infectious organism. I think the the. Uh, the earlier Resident Evils, particularly particularly Resident Evil 4, being an action game and yet still very standoffish, you really did not want anything getting even close to you. I don't think they're treating this infectious disease with the with the respect that it deserves. zombies in here.
Very glad I equipped that extra health healing skill. Would have died dozens of times over without it. That's the uh, cover mechanics there. Shooting a zombie that's in a sort of stunned position will break it out of the stun, so when I shoot the zombie carefully in the arm to run up and execute it, Elena then shoots it and breaks it out of that. Not very helpful. Of course, quite significant, depending on how you look at it, pandering or doing exactly as they should, that this game has zombies in it at all. Resident Evil 4 and 5 had zombie-like creatures that were intelligent and fast and could use guns, whereas these are just traditional zombies. Well, some of them did have guns, but I personally I felt like the way they used their guns was quite a satisfying zombie-like way, where they, they sort of raise their arm up with the trigger on the assault rifle. And because they're unnaturally strong, they're able to do that. Uh, so it's a bit silly, but then zombies are pretty silly anyway. I'm kicking this guy very, very gently, because I'm out of stamina. Just have a bit of a lie down. This level is also really, really long. They're not all this long. first couple of Leon levels, by the time you finish the first two chapters, you've done about one modern AAA game's worth of game. It's a shame that this game did do so badly, I mean, it, it, not, not that by any means it was entirely undeserved, but more or less every AAA game that comes out gets complaints about length and value. And this one really was... <laughs> Definitely represents value if if time is what you care about. Elena is in trouble. Oh, that's not good. That is also a really, really bad thing to have happened while I'm lying on the ground. She probably just killed me. Yep. <laughs> what the hell did I just see, Ada? So that woman, whatever. As you can see, checkpoints in this game. Kind of. Very poorly placed. The uh, while I'm while I'm going through this again, I can talk about the saving system. <laughs> yes, we do have to do this again. And whose fault's that, Capcom? The uh, so the, the game checkpoints reasonably frequently, nowhere near frequently enough, as you can see. Um, kill the dog so Helene doesn't get distracted during combat. Uh, but not every checkpoint is a save point. So if you quit, it won't restart you at the most recent checkpoint you got to. It will only... some of the checkpoints are marked as save points. And the only way you can tell is that the word saving appears very briefly on the screen instead of the word checkpoint. And if you're not paying attention, which you're probably not, because it's almost certainly in the middle of a boss fight or something, or at the very start of a boss fight, just after the exciting cutscene, then... Uh, you, you don't know when, whether or not it's saved, and you have to be really... So if, you, if you're at the point of saying, I could really do with a break, I'd like to go and do something else. Particularly if you're playing online and you can't save... Uh, sorry, can't pause. It, it, 
left with the impression that you actually can't, a lot of people a lot of people did incorrectly but perfectly understandably describe this as a game in which you weren't you you couldn't make any mid mission saves because it's you can you can play for quite a long way through the game and then you quit and then when you restart it puts you right back to the beginning of the level because you didn't actually reach the save point yeah and because this I mean this behavior like everything is undocumented it doesn't tell you it doesn't tell you whether or not it's going to do that it doesn't explain how it works and there isn't I don't really see any good justification for it not saving it ev any every checkpoint it's just it's just bizarre and unintuitive I suppose one reason for turning on that attack reaction option would be to physically block Helena from shooting zombies that I want to stun and melee to death. The game is significantly harder single player, it's worth pointing out. Um, I really need to stop saying it's worth pointing out. It's getting very repetitive. The game is significantly harder single player because although the co-op partner, unlike, unlike Resident Evil 5, the co-op partner is invulnerable and has infinite ammunition, which is an excellent mechanic. That's exactly the right way to do it, because it means I don't have to worry about her, she just does her thing without me needing to... Uh, that mean needing to micromanage her or give her more ammo or run over and heal her, use my healing items on her even though she got herself into a situation because of her terrible AI. But even so, she's no better than a than a human player and a human player can can act significantly more tactically appropriately. I've, I've not seen any cases where they do things better. The, the exception is that skill that where she just generates healing items for me every time she rescues me, which another player wouldn't be doing. Which has obviously kept me alive a few times, but not when she's not around. So a human player would have known not to have raised that thing in such a way that got me killed. and check to see if Helena left any loot in the other room. Because I'm very low on everything, really. No, nothing. <laughs> shooting any... Shooting any individual body part is actually a, a really, really good game mechanic in the scale of things. Resident Evil 4 had a variety of interesting mechanics for not for making headshots and not making headshots. There were enemies that got stronger when you headshotted them rather than weaker. And there were a lot of enemies that you had to shoot in very specific parts of the body to get to get them to work. Recent Resident Evil Revelations does the same thing by having depending on the enemy it can be more effective to shoot them in the arm, the leg or the head. And depending on the situation and the type of weapon that you're using, it's very, very sophisticated. But even just a basic a basic FPS typical sort of soldier based bog standard FPS. A headshot. A headshot's a fantastic mechanic because it, it introduces a really strong risk reward where making the headshot is more difficult but more rewarding. So an unskilled player can blast away at their chest and get by and a skilled player can very precisely aim for the head because you're you're less likely to hit at all if you're aiming for the head.
Now, uh, I, I guess an interesting exception to what I was saying earlier is... Because she can't die, I don't really need to worry about protecting her, whereas the situation that Helena's in right now is... a challenging one for a single player, and I would really need to be helping my co-op partner if that was a human. But as it is, I can just leave her alone. And she'll probably be fine. Oh, oh, no, maybe not. No, she got herself up fine. <laughs> not letting them guys kill me again. So this thing in the video hatched, and this definitely has a split down the back. Definitely creates the impression that I'm going to be coming back through this room and they're all going to be hatching on me. Probably time to leave. Come on. Warehouse factory sort of thing. Quite a nice environment actually. Oh, it's a, is that a hangar? It's a curved ceiling. Maybe it's a huge sewer or it's a an aircraft hangar of some sort. The one, the only... Oh, uh, yes. This is the first game of Resident Evil in which you can shoot while moving. Or rather, aim while moving. I can aim and I can move around. And uh, that's an interesting example of a mechanic which you, you really don't use very often in the game. It doesn't doesn't actually come up that often that you need to move while shooting. You can just run away and then aim some more. It's so convenient to run backwards and aim and run forwards and then aim. But I don't I don't ever really use it unless I'm just doing it for sort of stylish purposes like this. But it 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 seems to have enraged the Resident Evil community and therefore I'm really not convinced it was worth adding as a mechanic. It seems like uh, an example where the, the minor increase in playability is not worth the enormous hit in sentiment that they took as a result of it. These zombies with flashlights are actually recorded in the statistics screen. It tra keeps track of the number of zombies with flashlights that you've killed. I don't... I don't really know why. <laughs> that is a shrieker. Scientists lying on the ground. I don't know what what gives you each type of quick time event. That's the you can't possibly take damage from this, but you will have an opportunity to instantly kill the zombie quick time event, which is substantially better than the you are constantly taking damage until you finish hammering all the buttons quick time event. Which you obviously want to avoid under all circumstances. Good. 
I do have a lot of remote bombs, so. Watch yourself. They can overwhelm us if we're not careful. Zombie with. Hi. What's that? Dry ice? No. I can't remember what that's called. Rather than climb down into the factory, we've decided to hurl ourselves into a chute. We have no idea where it goes. In in Star Wars, when they did that, they knew where the chute led. But of course, in every computer game, you just hurl yourself into a random chute, because logic doesn't matter. Luckily, it didn't lead into a 100-foot drop, or bottomless pit, or... Instead, it led down to a... Which is lit with mine, primitive mine electricity lights. Why can't you fill me in yet? Because you probably don't believe me. That's why I want to show you. And when I do, you'll have all the answers and proof you'll need. So, despite the fact that we're no longer in the facility in which she said that we were going to find out the truth, and we're now in a completely random tunnel, neither of us know what it is. She's still not going to tell me anything because she's determined to string it along for as long as possible. You can crawl slowly under these things, or you can dive like that, which is much more satisfying. Back at that lab. Back tape. With your friend in it? There's a story on her anyway. Look, if you want answers, you should be prepared to give a couple yourself. You're right. It's only fair, I guess. That's a that's a reasonable explanation for lack of exposition. You say, I don't, I don't want to tell you. Um, Ada, Ada in the previous games was given no indication that her origin was a sort of secret science experiment origin, but of course she did have a mysterious past and everyone else in the series will ultimately turn out to have had a serious secret science experiment origin of some sort or another, so... It's perfectly believable. These zombies, this is some sort of ancient, I mean from the from the pots, this is supposed to be some sort of ancient place. Because it's full of pots and pots are ancient. And yeah, it's also full of zombies. Are these zombies from the recent outbreak? Deborah! She's lying here. We came to her as if we were expecting her to Deborah. be there. I don't know why she's wearing a nighty. I guess it's not unreasonable if she got kidnapped or something. Okay. Enough with the mystery. What the hell is going on here? Let's just get her out of here. And then I'll tell you everything. I promise. Hang in there, sis. You take care of her. Leave any hostiles to me. So we came from that direction, I think. So we're going this way. So in co-op, the Helena player does, in fact, have to carry Deborah. And to add insult to injury, not only can they not fight or do anything, they can't fiddle with their inventory in order to make space for things. So any of the items that are along here they can't pick up, they can't decide whether they'd rather have this item or that item. Deborah, They're just stuck you know, doing nothing. They can kick open uh, kick open pots. That's handy. So my inventory is now full, it has a, has a very specific very specific uh, capacity. And I have one free slot for picking things up in. A stack of ammunition uses a slot. Five grenades uses a slot.
I'm supposed to be escorting her, but these zombies aren't particularly dangerous anyway, because they're so slow. I melleed a bit heavily there, and I'm out of stamina. Time for a lie down. Oh, you don't regenerate stamina quickly while rolling, only while lying. It's kind of like resting. Except hilarious. I heard a zombie. There he is. <laughs> the zombie once more unconcerned by my melee attacks. This is the right way to do an escort, of course. They're not they're not targeting Deborah, I'm not I'm not responsible for protecting her. So we get the flavour of the situation without me needing to actually protect her. I don't think that's the first time that's happened. You do get up by yourself eventually. That's probably a good opportunity for a first aid spray. So first aid spray, equip it like a grenade and then use it on yourself, so it's much fiddlier to use in combat, but it does heal you to full. The roof is caving in. I'm fairly confident that having two different healing systems in the game is just a bad thing. I think they could have found a way to make first aid sprays unique and rewarding without necessarily being... radically different. Because actually, once you've once you've figured it out, the herb system isn't too bad. It, it's it's false lie in how unintuitive it is and unexplained it is and how their annoying inventory system makes using them difficult. But once you've got the hang of it, it's quite satisfying to have such precise control over how many health points you generate. It's analogous to the way Dungeon Siege used health potions. <laughs> Dungeon Siege, if you haven't played it, Dungeon Siege 1, that is. You only ever drank as much from a health potion, as exact, uh, exactly as much health as you needed from it. it? So it would have a health potion which had something like seven times your total health. During this section, obstacles which would have taken two people to push in any previous place, which I think are about the same size, shape, and weight, now only take one person to push because there's only one person available. <laughs> That's also true in various sections where you get split up. Ah, red herb I can't pick up. So at this point I'm going to have to start destroying some stuff so that I can pick up more herbs. So because I've not used up enough incendiary grenades, despite more or less chucking them whenever there was a group of enemies. completely unfazed by the headshots. He's carrying a, a kukri, I think, or a, a machete or something. Not sure where these ancient zombies are from, but... Seems like a strange armament anyway, given that we're not in Africa or whatever it is kukris are from. Uh, this is a boss fight room, if ever I saw one. Almost there. Deborah, stay with me, alright? 
So that explains where the no, no, statue things happening. come from. Like you've seen a ghost. Remember, she only talks in tired cliches. <laughs> Ada, what the hell is going on here? It's complicated. This isn't the time or the place. These walkways won't hold. We need to get to the lower levels. So sorry, Deborah. It's all my fault. Helena, get away from her! Stop! Don't shoot, please! So Deborah has become Kerrigan. She does have very nicely marked weak points. Deborah, where are you? Now this is actually a crossover scenario. It's, it was supposed to be a spoiler, but it's not actually a spoiler at this stage because of the way they rearranged the main menu. You play as Ada in the, in the fourth campaign, and if you're playing as Ada in this section, then you can, you can tell it not to, but by default it will try to join, if you're playing online, it will try to join you into a game of people who are playing as Leon and Helena, and so there'll actually be three players playing together here rather than just two, which is... Which is a brilliant idea, it's fantastic, but also kind of irrelevant, because of course people want to play co-op games with their friends, so the idea of a, a random stranger joining you, if there was a way to, to link it up so I could somehow organise to play this bit with a different friend who was at a different stage in the game, that seems like that would... I can't imagine how that would actually work, but it would be fantastic if it did. It, it's sort of conceptually brilliant, but in practice doesn't really work, and it's the most, but it's the most extraordinary idea. So this then becomes a three-player co-op boss fight. Spoilers, it's a boss fight. Watch out, you two! She's strong! Watch out for yourself. Sympathy for her. This is a nightmare. It can't be real. Oh, so that's what happens if you don't dodge.
It's actually a pretty cool design. It's got it's got kind of scorpion in it. A little bit of scorpion tail plus scorpion claws. It's also very reminiscent of Carrigan. The nudity is a little gratuitous. I don't think you can hurt her except by shooting her in the orange bits, but I'm not confident. You don't really get any feedback that you're accomplishing anything if you shoot her somewhere else. I'm not very good at dodging those attacks. Uh, Ada can also rescue me. There's no special relationship between the characters in that when there's a multi-boss fight going on, it doesn't doesn't really matter who was whose partner. In fact, I believe there's an achievement specifically for helping out someone who's not your partner. So I guess in that sense, there is it does matter, but uh, only for that reason. Dodging is sometimes helping and sometimes really not helping. Hang on. I'm standing right next to an explosive barrel. I hope the boss doesn't try to blow it up. Sliding forward seemed to work better. It's pretty interesting as a boss fight. I mean, it's got multi stages, it's got specific strategy, it's got zombies dropping in from above and dying. Now the uh, pairs of characters have changed, so I'm by myself. use a first aid spray because opportunities to efficiently use a first aid spray and get all six points of health out of it aren't, aren't that common. And because it empties a slot in my inventory which is precious. The other two are lowering down on a on a little trolley thing. Not trolley, what am I trying to say? <laughs> JML can of course stop bullets, but not a rifle butt. She's the natural predator of the chainmail.
the uh, rotate rotate the stick to rotate the crank quick time event I think is 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 not only perfectly acceptable but a, but an actively good thing it's it's much more interesting than just standing and watching your guy rotate the thing and 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 there's a obviously on the PC I'm, I'm rotating the cursor keys instead but there is there's some degree of skill in being able to do that well <laughs> There's also some degree of skill in not getting hit by these. So now we're in indie. Because every game has to have an indie section. We're going deeper and deeper and deeper and this this area is becoming more and more unconvincing. But uh, I, don't, I have a soft spot for ancient underground catacombs. on the floor seems like the best way of avoiding the sideways swipes. try and talk and dodge at the same time. As far as I know, it doesn't actually make any difference if you shoot her in that section. Which is a bit strange, because the, the train ride has a fixed length, and then at the end she gets knocked off, and that's, that's that. Spent too long picking up ammunition. <laughs> Luckily, it checkpointed in the right place this time. I believe the Helena player can't actually do anything at this point. Oh no, she has, she, has, she has a gun. She could defend herself. Just clearly the AI isn't doing a very good job of it. I think, I think in this situation in co-op... The Helena player can just do everything herself. They all seem to understand that she's a virus monster without any explanation.
Even though we saw a video of Ada coming out of one of those things, and Ada seems fine. Oh, I'm gonna make him pay for this. Look at me. It's gonna be okay. Look at me. Look at me. It's gonna be okay. Just keep your eyes on me. Help me. I'm gonna get you out of here, Deborah. Deborah, look at me. We're gonna get through this. No, let her go! Get away from Not me! Not her! Not my sister! Take me! Please! I'll do anything! Please! Please! Please don't hurt her! Deborah! I didn't know what else to do. So I helped him. I helped Simmons breach the President's security. That sounds like Simmons, all right. Why the hell would he do all this? Long story. We're up against the people who really run this country. In a very dangerous game. And if you don't play your hand right, Leon, where are you? Simmons there. Yes. Hunnigan, you need to be careful. I think he's the one who and did I all. Hear my name. Simmons. So it's a it's a it's a well set up situation in the sense in which it's interesting to have an enemy who's a it's a fairly traditional action thing, but a, interesting to have an enemy that highly placed and so on. Needless to say, it doesn't go anywhere and they do nothing with it. Um, this screen that you get at the end of each chapter shows you how you've done. You get medals, gold, silver, bronze, and green. The green ones stand out a bit. My clear time was an impressive D rank. My death was only a B, despite the fact that I died four times. It's quite generous. Uh, and I don't think these do anything or mean anything or are worth anything in uh, in co-op you get independently scored on them so I'm going to end the game there and uh, I'll be back for chapter 3 whenever I can find some time